Today's lab is starring the op amp. So you saw the op amp in lecture, you wondered about all the great things it could do, now we could work on it in the lab and get some experience with it. So first thing to know about op amps is just because it comes in a package like this, they call these 8-pin dual inline packages, doesn't mean that it's the op amp you want. So the ones we're using in the lab are called MCP6002, and you can see on the number right there that's printed on the case, as opposed to this one, which is called an HA1741. So that's a different kind of op amp, and they're all different types of devices that come in those packages. So always check to make sure you don't want to assume that you have the proper op amp and put the wrong thing in the circuit. So the op amp cartoon, if you go to the data sheet, looks something like this. So we have our device, our MCP6002, and it has eight pins on it. So these leads right here represent the pins. So this box is the package. And the pins are unique. In other words, if you put it in the breadboard in this orientation or that orientation, things are going to be different. So you want to make sure you locate pin 1. And you can see right by my thumb, there is that little shining dot right there. That's a glint of light shining in a little dot on the case. And there's also a notch right here. And I drew those on my cartoon picture. This is the notch. That's the little dot. And so that tells me that the orientation is facing that way. And what that means is that this is pin 1 right here. So we have pin 1, and then the numbering goes counterclockwise. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And these particular op amps actually are dual op amps. There's two op amps in the package, and that's indicated by the two triangles that are in here. And those are connected to the pins like this. That's our non-inverting, inverting input. So pin 3 goes to the non-inverting input. Pin 2 goes to the inverting input. Pin 1 is the output. And then on this op amp, which sometimes is called B, pin 6 is our inverting. Pin 5 is our non-inverting. So there are two other pins on here. There's pin 8 and pin 4. And pin 8 is the VDD pin, which is volt. A voltage drain drain and we don't need to know what that means but that means that this is the pin that should have five volts on it. it should be positive five volts put on pin eight then pin four is VSS or V source source and that one should have ground. So when we're connecting this device to our circuit we want to make sure that pins four and pins eight have five volts and ground on them. In today's lab we're going to be making a non-inverting amplifier so if you ref Call from the lectures, a non-inverting amplifier looks somewhat like this. So we have our input, so our VN terminal, and there's a V out terminal coming out of the op amp, and then we put a feedback network in our amplifier. Looks like that. And a lot of times we call this one RS for R shunt, meaning because it's going to ground. And then this one is RF. For feedback because that's the feedback resistor and if you recall the equation for gain is going to be V out over Vn equals 1 plus Rf over Rs. So that's the equation right there and yeah, that we can use that to if we have a gain that we know say if we wanted to hit a gain of 10 yeah, we could choose appropriate resistors to do that or if we had a circuit that was built we could use the equation forward in order to figure out what the gain was. So the first part of the lab we're going to actually be making is what they call a unity gain buffer, and it has a gain of 1. So if we look at the equation right here, how can we get this to have a gain of 1? Well, we have that one constant in there, and this is always going to be positive in this setup. So we really need to make the RF over RS go to 0. So we know that if we take RF, or if we short-circuit RF, that means that the resistance goes to 0. So basically just put a wire in there. So our RF is zero. And then if we take RS out of the circuit, so in other words, it's an open circuit, that has an infinite resistance. So we just basically solved it right there. So we have zero in our feedback loop. And then our shunt resistor is now an open circuit. And so if we have zero over infinity, that equals zero plus one equals one. Okay, great. So we just made an amplifier that has a gain of one. So in other words, if I put one in, 
I get one on the output. If I put two in, I get two on the output. Well, what good is that? You're probably wondering. Well, imagine you're trying to measure an EKG, right? That's the electrical activity of your heart. So we'll put in a heart-shaped power supply, and we know that we could model most things as a Thevenin and equivalent. So here's our heart-shaped circuit right there. We have one lead that's going to the ground. And if we just wanted to measure this with something like a, uh, a voltmeter, right? So it could be that we have like a 10 mega ohm resistor right here, and this signal is like 0.1 millivolts. It's a tiny signal. It's like hundreds of microvolts. Now, if we put our voltmeter across there, we learned in one of their earlier labs that that has a 10 mega ohm input resistance in the ohmmeter. So we just lost one half of our signal. You can see here we have a voltage divider of two, right? 10 mega ohms and 10 mega ohms. So here we're going to get 0.05 millivolts or 50 microvolts, which is tiny. So this is where the amplifier comes in. So say if we take out our, our multimeter again, and if we connect our electrical signal, the input of the op amp, we know that the current going in here equals zero, right? That's one of the deals about the op amp. And if the current equals zero, that means there can't be any drop across this resistor because we'd be violating Ohm's law. So that means we're gonna get our full 0.1 millivolt to the input here. And then the output of the op amp has a much lower impedance or resistance. It's in the tens of ohms. So now we could connect you know, a very small load resistor here, say even 100 ohms, and it's not gonna have any effect on the input circuit at all. So that's the power of what we call this unity gain buffer right here. So we're gonna build this circuit in the lab, and we're gonna build that part. We're not gonna do any EKG today. And to make it complete, we're gonna have five volts connected to our VDD, and this pin's gonna be connected to ground. So that's the negative power supply of the op amp. Okay, the ingredients that we're going to use to build our amplifier today, we're going to use the breadboard. We're going to use the Arduino only as a power supply. So we know the Arduino has a ground pin. It has a 5-volt pin on it. And we could plug our op amp into the breadboard. So this is my MCP6002. And when they come out of the package, sometimes the leads are split, so you have to squish the leads on a little bit. And then when you place it in the breadboard, I want to put it so that the the number one pin is on my left. So the number one pin is over here. And when I do that, that conveniently puts the five volts on the top of the board so that I could go from the Arduino five volts directly to the top without doing a cross. And then we have a ground axis down here. So I have my op amp there and I'm gonna carefully get the pins in the holes, push it down, ensure that it's in the proper way. And it is, you can see there's the notch and then the little and the little symbol right there. So that's pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So next thing we'd do is we'd wire up the power supply so you can look in the lab. So five volts will go to eight, ground will go to four. Now, when we go to build our circuit, so we have two useful documents, right? We have the cartoon map of the circuit, and then we also have the thing that we want to build, the schematic right there. So you, and this is kind of what we're trying to do is transfer you know, one over to the other. And so if we know that our VIN pin is going to be the positive input of the op amp, in other words, the non-inverting input, we go over here and say if we're using op amp one, we could just neglect the, the second op amp. So pin three goes to that non-inverting input. So therefore this would be pin three. So the inverting input goes, gets the feedback from V out. So we go back to our circuit over here. We want, that really means that we want to connect pins one and pins two because that's what it's showing in this diagram right here. So that's how you're gonna do the wiring. And so we're gonna leave that part up to you. So to make the lab a little bit interesting, we're gonna simulate a high impedance or high resistance Thevenin an equivalent circuit. So, and we're gonna do that using a potentiometer. So we'll take our, our heart out of here. Let's redraw all this stuff. And then, so you probably remember the potentiometer from EK131 or EK210. So it's a resistor, and if you connect the bottom to ground and the top to five, and then there's a third pin called the wiper, which looks like that. The wiper is connected to a little screw terminal, and as you turn that screw, the wiper moves up and down, and this is basically a voltage divider where you can adjust the output voltage here by turning the screw. So to make things more interesting, we're gonna insert a 10 mega ohm resistor in series with it and then it's going to go into the input of the op amp. And we're doing that because this right here is basically going to simulate 
a thevenin equivalent source with a very high thevenin resistance. And then you're going to take some measurements. So then to spice things up a little bit, so we have our gain of 1, now we're going to add back in our RF and our RS values. So we'll put those resistors back in. And we're going to ask you to choose a gain of approximately 3, calculate the values you need for RF and RS, and then modify your circuit so that you can get a gain. And then you're going to verify that gain by measuring the output voltage for a series of different VNs. Like you'll turn the potentiometer a little bit as you're measuring the VN and say it'll be at 0.1 volt and then you'll measure the voltage on the output and maybe it'll be 2 volts or something. Turn up the potentiometer, get to 0.2 volts. The output will be another thing. So you'll end up making a table of those things in a spreadsheet so you have like your VN, your Vout, and then another one we're going to call Vout over VN. And you know, you'll just do a series of voltages, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Figure out your outputs. Then you're going to divide the V out by Vn and get some number. And then ultimately, we're going to want to plot that in a graph. We're going to have a plot of V out on the vertical axis and Vn on the horizontal axis. And you'll get some kind of line. And the slope of that line is going to be the gain that you calculated over here. So you're going to want to verify that. And it's going to work for a while, then you're going to notice something's going to happen to the slope, and we want you to figure out what's happening to the slope and explain it to us.